Hey everyone, Daniel here for Rock the JVM, and this is yet another video on monads in Scala. Now, this video is yet another aspect of the monads concept applied to the Scala language, and we have another video here on the Rock the JVM channel about monads, specifically for their motivation from a practical perspective in real life code. Now, in this video, we're going to tackle the monads concept from another angle, and that is the generalization of code and API design. So, as assumptions, I'm going to assume that you're comfortable with Scala, and ideally that you watched the other video on monads in Scala from a practical practical perspective. As always, I'm going to recommend that you code alongside me, and whenever you need to refresh this concept, just refer back to the video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description, or to the CATS course, again with the link in the description, where I discuss this concept in real detail. Alright, so I'm back in my code where I have a small object called monads, and I'm going to type a main method in case we need to test things. And I'm writing Scala 3 for this video, and you can apply the same concepts to Scala 2, and I'm going to show you what you need to do if you want to write Scala 2 in your code. All right, cool. Now, monads express a certain kind of structure in our code, and you may have seen the pure plus flat map definition in other tutorials or videos, and I'm certainly going to refer to them here, but my goal for this video is a little bit different. Let me give, or let me start with an example. So, you know from lists, for example, in uh, standard collections, that we have map and flat map, which are extremely useful for us functional programmers. So, for example, if I have a list, which is, for example, the list one, two, three, four. I can transform that, let's say, an incremented list as a list dot map with underscore plus one, and this returns a new list, in our case, the list two, three, four, five. And we also have a very handy method called flat map, and I'm going to call this a flat mapped list as a list. I'm going to say flat map, and flat map takes as an argument. A function that takes an integer, which is every one of the elements of this list, and returns another collection. So I'm going to say a flat map with x, arrow, let's say, list with x and x plus 1. And you probably know the effect of flat map. This simply constructs a chain of lists. So in our case, the list 1, 2, the list 2, 3, the list 3, 4, and the list 4, 5. And then flat map concatenates them all together in a single list. So we don't have nested lists. This is why it's called flat map. Now, the interesting thing is that this concept of the ability to construct an item a list in this case, a wrapper type out of simple values, the ability to map and the ability to flat map, this structure, this triad of capabilities happen with many, many different types. So this occurs in the same style for lists, options, try, IO, and many other types. Now, our job or the goal for this video is to somehow abstract away or write an abstraction that describes this structure for all these types. Now, as a motivation, I'm going to write a small, let's call this an API method for the combination of all the elements in a list of strings cross a list of integers. So for example, I can say combine lists and this will take a uh, list of strings and another list of integers and this will return a list of tuples, let's say string and int. And in order to combine or do a cross product between these two lists, the string list and the number list, you'll write a for comprehension. So for comprehension will uh, look something along the lines of s in the list of strings and n in the list of numbers, you will yield s and n. And if you write this in main, if I, for example, print line combine lists with the list, let's say, A, B, and C, and the list with numbers, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll get all the combinations between strings and integers. But wait a second, I think I have a compiler error because the list here occurs as the second argument list, so I need to place my parentheses carefully here. So, okay, I think I should not have compiler errors 
anymore. So let me run this and you will see all the combinations between every string and every number. So we have A1, A2, A3, A4, B1 and C1 and so on. So we have all the possible combinations. Now, assume for a second that you want to apply the same functionality for options and for tries, for example. So at the moment, you have no other option, no pun intended, but to duplicate this API to apply the same thing for options and for tries. So I'm going to write another method here. Let's call this combine option or options. And I'm going to say str as an option string. A number as an option int and this will return an option of a tuple so a string and int and you will basically copy the exact same implementation because the four comprehensions also work for options as well you probably know how four comprehensions get deconstructed by the compiler into a map and flat map chain so I'm gonna say combine list combine options and also let's say combine try so I'm gonna have combine try as taking an, a try of string as an argument. So I'm going to have to import that. So I'm going to import that with Scala util try. So I'm going to import it here. So Scala util try. And we have a string as a try of string and a number as an option, not an option, but a try of int. And this will return another try of tuple string Int. And the implementation would be pretty much identical, so I'm going to have to copy that. And four comprehensions will work just as fine. But notice that even though the APIs look different because we have list, option, and try respectively, the implementations are the same. And that is a pity. So even though we have multiple APIs with pretty much similar signatures, there is no way to deduplicate our code. And so we have to resort to copying the implementations. And this is where the monad concept comes into play in order to generalize this API. So I'm going to define a small trait that I'm going to call monad. And this will take as a type argument, a type which is itself generic. So this will be a higher kind of type. I called it M for monad. And this has a bunch of methods. One is called pure and takes a type argument A and a value of type A. And this has the capability of wrapping a simple value into a wrapper type M of A. In much the same style as we can create lists containing values or options containing a value or try containing a value, this pure abstracts away this capability of wrapping a simple value into a wrapper type. And the other fundamental method for the monad trait is called flat map. But in the trait, flat map will take a slightly different signature. So this will take two type arguments A and B. The A stands for the initial wrapper type M of A, which I'm going to pass first as the first argument list. So this will be an M of A, as we had initially a list of whatever, and a function that transforms an A into a wrapper B in the same style as we do here with flat map, where every element is being turned into a list, not into another element. So we're going to formalize that as a function from A to M of B. So this will turn an element of type A into a wrapper type M of B, and this will return an M of B. Now, the interesting thing is that because we have pure and flat map, we can define another method for free in terms of pure and flat map, and this magical method is called map. And this takes two type arguments A and B, a wrapper type M of A, and a function from A to B, not M of B. And this will return another M of B. If you watch the Rock the JVM channel, this method is specific to another type class called a functor. So monad will naturally extend the functor type. And the map method can be easily implemented in terms of pure and flat map, and we can implement it like this. I can call flat map on the initial wrapper MA. And the function argument that I need to supply to flat map needs to be of the shape A to M of B. And right now I have a function from A to B. So I'm going to define a function that given a value of type A, I'm going to apply F to it. But right now I have a value of type B, so I need to wrap it into another M via a call to pure. So I'm going to say pure FA. 
So Moonet has these two fundamental methods, and if we have these two implemented, whoever ends up implementing pure and flat map will also have the map method already defined for free. Now, here's how I'm going to generalize these three APIs into one. I'm going to define a general method, and I'm going to call that combine. Given a type argument, which is itself generic, so a higher kind of type, and I'm going to have a string as a wrapper of strings, and another thing that I'm going to call num as a wrapper of integers, and I'm going to add a using clause. So I'm going to say using monad as a monad m, and this will return an m of tuples, string and int, and I'm going to basically write the same implementation with a for comprehension, but I don't have access to the for comprehension yet. I'm going to write the explicit map and flat map chain. So I'm going to say monad.flatmap. And I'm going to start with the string wrapper, as we did earlier with a for comprehension, or rather what the compiler does. And as a function, I'm going to say, given a string inside, I'm going to say monad.map. And then I'm going to take the other wrapper, numbers, and the function will take a number, n, and this will return a tuple s and n. So this is what a for comprehension actually boils down to. And here I use this explicitly because I don't have access to a for comprehension given that I depend on this monad instance. Now, why is this approach better? This approach is better because it generalizes this behavior for whichever type being generic, has a monad m in scope. So I'm going to give an example with monad list. So I'm going to define a given instance, let's call this monad list. And I'm going to define that as a monad list with, and I'm going to override pure and flat map. So I'm going to say pure, and I'm going to override that here. And I'm going to simply wrap this little value into a list. And I'm going to override the flat map method. And I'm going to resort to the Scala standard implementation. So I'm going to say ma flat map f. Cool. So if I've done that, you can also do this for option, try, and other types, including IO, writer, and whatever other kinds of monads you might imagine. Now, if I have this given instance, I can simply call, let's call this combinations, and I'm going to say combine with a list. I'm actually going to take these two argument lists exactly as they are, and they will still work. So this still works just fine, because the compiler infers that the type of the argument or rather the M type is list, and it requires the presence of a monad list in scope, which we have given as this given definition. And this combinations thing will work. So if we print this in main, it will work in the exactly the same way. So I'm gonna use combinations here, and I'm going to run my application. Hopefully I didn't add any compiler errors. So notice that these two lists are completely identical. So we achieve the same functionality with a single API, which is very general in a higher kind of type for which there is a given monad m in scope. And we can do without these three APIs for which we have duplicated code. So we can keep just one and add given monad instances for whatever type we want to support. But that's not all. We can enhance this API and make it even more expressive. So I'm going to define an extension method for all types m, which are generic. If there is a monad m in scope, we can extend them to use flat map and map so that we make them available for four comprehensions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to define an extension. So I'm going to say extension given a type argument m, which is higher kinded and a type argument a, which is the value type. So I'm going to decorate, I'm going to enhance the MA type. If we have a monad, so monad M in scope, I'm going to enhance the MA type with two methods, map and flat map, so that we can safely use four comprehensions. So here's the deal. I'm going to define a map method that takes another type argument B and a function from A to B. And right now the map method is more similar to the Scala standard collection map method. So this will return an M of B. 
and I'm going to implement that as using monad.map with ma and the argument f. So given that I have access to this monad instance, I can call the map method inside, and I can define a flat map method that takes a type argument b and a function from a to a wrapper b, so m of b, and this will return another m of b, and this as an implementation will say monad.flatmap, and I'm going to use the same arguments m, a, and f. So if we have a monad m in scope, we can enhance the m, a type with these two methods, map and flatmap. And if so, we can define another combine method that looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna say combine, we'll call this version two, with a higher kind of type m, for which there is a monad in scope. So I shorthanded that to say colon monad. This is a context bound. So this is equivalent to me saying using monad m. And I'm going to add the two argument lists, string and number. So I'm going to use that here. And this will return an m of string and int. So right now, because I assume that there is a monad m in scope, both the m string and the m int have access to the map and flat map methods as extension methods. So I can say str, the wrapper of strings, flat map, given s I'm going to return num.map with a function from an integer to a tuple, s and n. So I wrote that a little bit differently without relying on the monad instance, but rather relying on the map and flat map methods as extension methods. So I'm going to define a value, let's call this combinations version two. And I'm going to use combined version two on the same arguments. So I'm gonna say combine underscore version two and I'm going to print it out to the console to prove that it still works. So I'm going to use combinations and combinations version two, run this application, and we're going to see the exact same list being printed. But because we are using flat map and map on the instances themselves, on the wrappers themselves, we can now use four comprehensions. So I can still simply copy the four comprehension implementation and I can paste it here and it still works exactly as it is because the four comprehension expands to map and flat map, which are now available to m string and m int because there is a given monad m in scope. So now we can simply call combine onto lists, onto options, onto tries, onto IOs, onto any kind of data structures for which you have a given monad of that type and scope. So monads are an extremely powerful tool that will allow you to enhance your existing data structures with four comprehensions regardless of what their generic type is, and therefore allowing you to write very general APIs that cover a lot of use cases at once. So monads are a powerful concept, and I hope this video was illustrative enough for the generalization of APIs. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn as I post fresh updates on upcoming material. Please share feedback with me in the comments. I read every single one. And check out the Rock the JVM website. I have hundreds of hours of content on Scala and Akka and functional programming and Cat's Effect and many, many other goodies based on Scala here on Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, signing off.